This is the story of how a group of Arab youth created a buzz heard around the virtual world. They took to Twitter and Facebook, posting pictures, videos, and cries of help, all in the hopes of creating change in their societies. We'll take a deeper look at their story and see just how much social networking sites affect Arab youth like them. About 59 million Arabs use the internet compared to 1.7 billion worldwide. It may seem like the Arab nations are far behind, but the reality is quite different. In nine years, the number of internet users in the Arab states increased by 1,600%. That's four times greater than the world as a whole. It's no wonder such a medium has revolutionized almost all aspects of life. It constantly tests the boundaries between what is banned and what is tolerated. But where is this line drawn in the Arab states? Perhaps no one explores this boundary more than Arab youth. They've adopted the internet as a major means of communication. Blogging, tweeting, and Facebooking are all new verbs for this generation of internet consumers. They choose to surf the web from the comforts of their own home or within the walls of a net cafe, sometimes with negative results. Egyptian blogger Kareem Amr is spending four years in jail for his blog posts. These pictures show a protest of Amr's jail sentence, organized online. Such web pages are all a part of a larger information society that bridges the East to the West. The United Nations says building this information society in the Arab world can be a cure for the region's poverty of capabilities and poverty of opportunities. Esra al-Shafi says a lack of opportunities is what drives many young Arabs to vent their frustrations online. Shafi is the director of MideastYouth.com, a student-owned independent network that strives to create a constructive dialogue in the Middle East. Her network, founded in 2006, supports many human rights causes, like freeing jail blogger Kareem Amr and giving migrant workers more rights in the Middle East. A lot of people here use the internet as a way to escape from the reality. And we thought, okay, we need to interact in a way that is fun and creative and not boring and depressing. The Mideast Youth website has iPhone and BlackBerry applications, podcasts, Facebook pages, Twitter accounts, YouTube videos, just to name a few. Chef Ayi says these multi-platform add-ons fuel the purpose of the group, though government censorship sometimes gets in the way. Censorship is a big problem. Um, governments now are becoming like slightly more sophisticated, so they're blocking certain groups. We're constantly trying to come up with ways to circumvent it. Many governments in the Middle East see such websites as a necessary nuisance. Necessary in the sense that a government can hardly stop the influence of the internet and social media sites but a nuisance in the sense that their content might produce a swell of unfavorable ideas. While the internet is a great tool for dialogue, it has some regimes worried that this freedom of expression will undermine their authority. It's no secret that censorship runs rampant in countries like Egypt, Syria, and Saudi Arabia. Reporters Without Borders names these three countries, among others, as internet enemies for their censorship of online content and movements to detain bloggers like Kareem Amr. As governments try to control online content, internet citizens, or netizens, are becoming more inventive with their efforts to elude excessive internet restraint. But this does not come without risk, says Dr. John Omler, English professor at the University of South Florida Honors College. He's a close follower of news in the social networking realm. No matter how traditional or, or orthodox a religious government is, no matter how absolute a uh, totalitarian government is, the technology is now available to transcend those limitations. Sometimes at a great price, if you get caught, obviously, but it's there. Chef Ayi knows this price all too well. She says there's a certain danger that goes hand-in-hand hand with her line of work in MideastYouth.com. She says she receives all kinds of threats, including death threats, which is why you will never see a picture of her anywhere on the internet. Still, she says her work won't be affected by the narrow-mindedness of others. I think people are just scared to embrace certain elements of change in their societies. And this is especially true for the older generation, of course. You know, things like globalization, people embracing other religions, they see now homosexuality and this and that. They're scared that, look, we're going to lose all our values, we're going to lose our culture, our religion, our traditions, that we need to fight for those things. This fight Chef Ayi speaks of has gone viral. New media, especially Facebook, has made dissidents as easy as a click away. Chef Ayi believes that Facebook, one of the most popular of social networks, is the future of digital activism. It's all about interaction, like a platform that is limitless in what you can do with it. Dr. Omler says social networking sites help to bridge existing limitations, like the distribution of ideas, across the borders of stifled nations. 
The ability to control the ideological makeup of your nation has become much more difficult now because the internet is an international forum and ideas not just going out but coming in. People in those countries are also getting information from elsewhere that they wouldn't otherwise be able to get and that the government doesn't want them to see. The most recent example of this happened April 6th and 13th of this year. Egyptian protesters of the Kefaya movement, the Arabic word for enough, lined the streets of Cairo. When violence began, nearly every social network buzzed with activity. Tweets from user Wa'ala Abbas say, Dear world, watch Egypt closely now. User Hibba al-Sharif asks, The government's ants are marching all over you. What will become of you, Cairo? The prominent 6th of April movement, which began entirely on Facebook in 2008, now boasts 77,000 online members. In the years since then, protesters have taken to the streets to demonstrate against their government and general social issues. Spray-painted graffiti lines the walls of the alleys in the days before the protests this year, all in anticipation of April 6 events. Graphic artists upload posters to the group to illustrate their frustrations. One in particular says, April 6 isn't just one day of the year, it's every day of the year. Mohamed Azraq, a Jordanian writer for Global Voices, says that online activism is not enough to create social change. It must be paired with a more tangible form of opposition, something he says is very evident in Egypt. If online activism is not coupled with activism on the ground, it has very little impact and very little repercussions in return. It's when it's coupled, when it's matched with, when it's followed by activism on the ground, it is then when there's a price to doing such business. This year's protesters were met with a legion of riot police, and violence followed. Some dragged protesters into garages or beat them in the street. Other police confiscated cameras and destroyed videos. Those videos and pictures that were leaked went straight to social networking sites. Users were urged to save the videos and pictures in case they were taken down. Twitter was abuzz with excitement during these events. The Kefaya subject was filled with tweets, multiple posts a second, of accounts of police brutality and general reports of what was going on in the streets of Egypt. Ten years ago, these instantaneous reactions were unheard of. Now, they're a fact of daily life. And this is all due to social networking and a people's attempt at changing their society through new media. As the potency of social networking sites is realized, tech-savvy Arab youth and digital activists like Shafi can still turn to the Internet as a platform for dialogue. For this new generation of Internet consumers, the years to come will test government control of social networks and help determine just how much power rests at their fingertips. Reporting in Tampa, I'm Carmel Dalshad.